Hi there and welcome back. So good to have you back here. Hope you're enjoying all the stuff that we're putting out today. Will be a restorative. Uh, restorative yoga is for me calmness, the slowness, and giving the body time to just discover a little bit more length in through their muscles. Today we are going to focus on our, our hamstrings, in through our spine, and a little bit of work through the lower back and some twisting. So we'll see you on the mat. Let's come into a comfortable seated position. Now, I've got my bolster propping my hips up. So if you can get a cushion or something underneath your hips, this is an ideal position to be able to lie with your, sit with your knees lower than your hip line, okay? Now, it might mean that you get your knees underneath, but it might mean that your legs are straight like this. The hips are slightly lifted or in here so that we're not dropping the whole length of the femur back into that hip socket. So if you can come into here or you can roll, you literally roll forward. So we are, I'm shuffled right to the very edge of the bolster. So if you want a couple of cushions and maybe a towel rolled up, just push yourself forward. Um, just tips the pelvis forward slightly and gives us a longer lower back. So we're just going to start here, soften the shoulders down away from the ears and just take a gentle neck stretch. So we've done a little bit of uh, neck stretch and seated work before, but we just want to lengthen out through here and come into your midline and then just draw chin to chest. Inhaling, looking up. Now we're going to stay in this midline and focus on pressing out through the upper back just a little bit more, curling the chin into the chest and then rising up. So we can become quite stuck in through our thoracic spine. So this is nice, we're just pressing back. It's almost like a seated cat-cow pose. So if we're opening up through the chest and the shoulders, widening out through your collarbones, and then curling back, filling up into the back of the body and rolling back. And let's just go two more here. Inhale, lifting. Exhale, pressing back. Nice big inhale, rising up. And then one more pushing back. And just ease yourself out from shoulder to shoulder, wiggling around, maybe drawing like a little figure of eight underneath, no right or wrong here. Just move however your body feels it needs to giving yourself some time just to release in through the shoulders, the back of your rib cage, moving nice and easily. And then finding your neutral spine, we're gonna come on in. So from here, we'll release the bolster away, coming into a seated position. So I've got a couple of props with me today. I've got a strap, okay? I've got a uh, strap which we're gonna use to lengthen out through the hamstrings. And I've also got a stretchy band. So you can use either one, okay? Or just a towel if you need to. So we're gonna have those near us. We're gonna roll through the spine, curling out through the spine, just letting go. Now holding on to behind the knees, curling through, big C curl in the spine, all the way down. Ooh. Click in my back, float the arms up, and then bring them back in, landing your hands beside your hips, walk the feet in, and then rolling your spine up. So all of these moves are designed to be not strenuous, one more lift on your bridge, rising up. And releasing back down, just allowing one vertebrae at a time to drop back into the ground. Good, and from here, let's draw one knee in. Now, if your knees are sore, you can hold behind your knee. There's no right and wrong place here. Squeezing in gently, 
and we can mobilize in here. So we're just pressing the knee, easing it in towards the shoulder. What is nice in our restorative practice is if we close our eyes and feel the body rather than opening the eyes, looking around, seeing what's happening, closing off one of the senses so we're able to just get the feedback from that hip, from the glutes, from the top of the hamstring and release that leg down gently and change legs. So bring the other one in, holding on behind the knees, curling in and releasing. So guiding, inviting. We don't want to be harsh in the way we conduct our practice here, ever in our practice, but we just want to be able to come through easing a little bit more length, just inquiring whether we can come to a different edge each time. Nice, and then let go. So we're gonna come back into that original leg. So say you used your right leg first, let's bring that right leg in. The bottom leg is gonna go straight, so that will straight away start to feel a little bit longer. Now, easing up, so as if we wanna put the foot towards the ceiling. Doesn't matter how straight your leg goes, and then bending in again. And then straighten it, and bend. So the quest isn't to get a big straight leg here, okay? We are releasing in through between the glutes and the hamstrings, giving that sciatic nerve a little bit of a massage. Up and down. And one more. Inhale, lift. Exhale, release. And gently coming in and releasing that leg you've just worked back down. Let it settle. Bring the other one in and just releasing up. Now you may observe that you're quite different one side to the other and that is perfectly fine. Just lifting and lowering the leg, keeping the knee nice and close. We're not straightening that leg away. We're keeping the torso and the thigh nice and close and just easing a little bit more length into the back of the leg. One more, and release it down, good. So from here, let's ease out through those hip flexors into our bridge, rising up, peeling your spine from the bottom to the top, off the ground. Now if you can, from here, curl the heels gently up, and then we'll float the spine back down, landing one vertebrae at a time from the top to the bottom, all the way down. Rising back up again, and as you rise, let's float the arms overhead. Leave the hands overhead, reach them towards the ceiling. You're gonna float the arms wide, extending out through the chest. Stay up nice and high in that bridge, rising up, fingers come over, and then reaching your fingertips over and behind you. Now when you're up here, I want you to roll gently down, observe what's happening through your back, where do you need to adjust, and let go. Rising back up through those hips. Now if your hamstrings are screaming at you, like what's happening, walk your feet closer to your hips. Float your hands up and float your hands wide. And then from here, keep the arms wide and just float those hips back down, 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 and release. Keeping your arms nice and wide, we're gonna work to set your feet wider than your mat. So they're wider than hips and your knees are wider than hips as well. We're gonna work here to open up, drop through one side. So what happens here, we go open, open hip one side, close hip the other. So this takes care of our internal and external rotation in the hip. So you might find your shoulder comes off, you might find you rolling up. Now ask what you need from this top arm. Do you need to send it overhead? 
Does it need to come back? Do you need a little prop through here? Can you lie nice and straight? Now, nice breath in. Exhale. As you inhale, just release those legs over and we'll come across to the other side. So we're not doing anything strange too much one side or the other. We generally do one one side and then one the other. So this is a lovely open hip posture on that top hip. If it feels good to take the arm over, so we really get a beautiful stretch all the way through the armpit, the rib cage, all the way down the side of your hip, front of the hip flexor, and down your IT band right into your quad muscle. So we're gonna go a little bit deeper into this stretch. Coming up gently and bringing it back into that right side or the first side you worked on. So from here, settle into the back of your body, draw the shoulders down away from the ears. Take a couple of breaths and think about how your body feels in this position. So we can add to this. So we're gonna go longer into that back hip, longer into the thigh, a little bit more intensity into it. You can pick up your foot and land it gently down to the outside edge of that top knee. So this gives you a lot more weight down onto that stretch. Some people love this posture, some people do not love it, okay? So personally, my knees are a little bit sore, so with me adding to that load, it doesn't work for me but I want to be able to show you the option. Other people love it. Coming up gently and releasing to the other side. Dropping in, so we rotate through the hip, engage into the glutes, dropping and softening your top leg down. The inside of the knee drops closer to the floor. So depending on your range, on your genetics, lots of things on how you feel today, what you've been doing, what the time of the day is. Maybe you take the foot up and you drop it in. Take a breath, breathe and release through that stretch. Like I said, you may try it and think, no, nah, not for me, that's okay, I'm just fine here. This is opening my hips and I'm really enjoying it. I don't need any more. So this restorative practice is just about rolling in through our different, now just mobilize gently, don't go full range, and just mobilize from one place to the other, where you've been, not as deep each time. We're just gonna do three where we mobilize before we come into our next serve moves. And bringing it in. So like I said, all of our movements here are nice and mindful. They're like, I like to think about restorative or yin yoga like a moving meditation. So really mindful on each of um, our positions where we go to. From here, we're lifting up the right leg, nice and high. We're gonna reach up, take hold with two hands. Now your leg might be here, okay? You might be back here somewhere, you might be there. Now try to lift it up and try to get straight through the back of the knee. So I'm not really bothered if you're here, 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 or here, I'm not really bothered and you shouldn't be either, okay? Sometimes the genetics that we're being given from our hamstring length is just what we've been given. So we bring that leg up, sole of the foot is nice and tall like we're stood on the ceiling. We're lifting up, reach up, and then 
bring it gently down, pushing out of the foot on the ground. So we're able to lift this tailbone off. The glute comes off and you're a little bit longer. So you might be staring straight up at your toenails. And then just take a little tiny bit of mobilization in and out, in and out, in and out. And releasing when you're ready to come down, bending your knee and landing your foot. Now, as I mentioned before, we do have some props. So if you want to come up, use coming into the other leg. If you really, really can't reach up, okay, you might come here. But use this little strap or a towel or a scarf or anything you've got. You can just ease that leg in towards you here. Toes pull in towards the face, you're as straight as you can be here. And with our strap or our scarf or whatever we're using, dressing gown cords are great. So we can leave that leg out here and the upper body stays down nice and passive. If we want to come up and then drop back down, we can. And you might find that eventually your leg comes closer so you can use your hand or your hands. And then just a little tiny mobile mobilization in and out. So here we're gaining a bit of length, pushing out of this foot on the ground, pressing out, pressing out. Be honest with yourself and think, where do I feel this? Where is it? Is my core engaged? Am I nice and steady through my hips? And when you're ready, you can bring it down. So from here, we're gonna come into hip. So staying on our back, picking that leg up and releasing away. So from here, it's nice and wide in your arms. And we're just gonna tick-tock cross. Side to side to mobilize in through here. So we take this movement in through the lower back, in through the sacrum. And from here, we're gonna lift the legs up. If this is too strong for you, just leave them down, that's fine. Easing, we're gonna go just ease into that top knee and press it away, and maybe we'll lift. So pulling gently that leg closer, and this one comes away. Now, if you want to, you can lift the head, neck and shoulders up, and then we can release them back down. And if you want to bring this down just to make it less active, a little more passive, we stay down here. So we're going to work from here into our peak pose. Which is our cat's tail. So even though this is a restorative, a nice big long stretch, um, in each position. Cow's tail can be quite a complex position. So we're gonna do it in stages. So if you, your right leg is up, your right leg journeys itself all the way down. The foot comes to the floor and you drop in. Now your left leg is on the floor behind you here. You're gonna lift your right hand, bring it up, holding on and then roll those shoulders back in. So here we're bound up. We've got hold of here. Once again, your band or strap can come in really handy here. It can link through your foot. You can use it just to open up, bring that knee in. So we get a lovely quad stretch on the bottom leg, hip opener on the top leg. It's beautiful and open for the rib cage and the back. And you can hold on. And this is our cat's tail, shoulders out, high gaze is lifted. Breathing, you can hold this for any period of time you like. Taking a good two or three nice, deep, nourishing breaths 
as you settle into your cat stretch, cat's tail. You can also do this without taking that bottom foot, just releasing out. Top knee is nice and high. Now coming out of this, we just float those knees back in towards the side chest, squeezing in, and then roll back into center. So we're gonna work onto the other side. So we've learned the foot, foot comes on. So if we find that the knee is right back here, just convince it to come away. Turn your toes in towards your shins. So we have a nice active foot, flex foot, rocking gently side to side. So we open in the hips here, strong in through your shoulder line, open through the back of the neck, the arms are wide. Just visualize rocking gently side to side through your lower back, in through that sacrum. How does it feel? Rolling weight from one side to the other. And from here, we might want to lift, pressing the leg away. We might want to come up a little bit stronger. You don't need to though, it's perfectly fine. So this makes this side of your leg feel a little bit stronger on the stretch. Once again, maybe, maybe closing your eyes to feel and inquire with your body what you want. Are you holding tension in your shoulders, in your hips? Are you even through the floor? And, and then you're gonna open the arms and rock to take about three rocks side to side to be able to drop your foot towards the ground. And when we drop the foot into the ground, we want to drop it down like we're directly standing on it. So rather than, I don't know, I see some funky things going on, but rather than kind of like this, or I don't know, right on the side of your leg, just stand on it as if you're stood on your foot. Here, it's pretty simple. Land, sink. So here we have our left leg over. Okay, this is quite strong into the hip. So, reaching our left hand through, comes through, tucks the right toe behind you and let go. So you can hold on to both feet if you want to, if your arms are there. This, we get a nice traction in through the side of the arms and the shoulders, or if you feel it's too much, just let go. Remember, you can take the strap, take the towel or dressing gown lead and just hold on here. Breathe and release. Taking as much time here as you need to. So softening out through the back of the head, the back of the neck, even through your shoulders. Just enjoy this posture. Some people feel like they're right over here, okay? They can't get their foot and they're right over here. And that's fine, just ease your body back as much as you can. This is about an open rotation. So just check in with what you need. And when you're done, we're gonna curl the knees into the side. And just remember, you can watch one of these videos, you can watch a practice, just take some notes for yourself, call the postures what you need to, releasing in, and then maybe coming through it yourself, coming into a nice small ball, and then relaxing gently down. 
and release the feet down. Let your legs land nice and long. Soften out through the back of your body. Release the arms. So we're going to allow the belly to rise and fall as we breathe. As we inhale, belly rises as you exhale, the belly falls. Inhale in and exhale. So gently coming through to the end of your practice. Finding a position that's comfortable for you. Now I know that I use my bolster underneath my knees to give my lower back some support. This is an optimum support position for me. You may use a cushion under your knees. This is quite lovely the way that your pelvis sits back gently. And I want you to take 10 rotations of a 10 count breath. So with our 10 count breath, we fully exhale. You inhale for four, Three, two, one, and exhale. Six, five, four, three, two, and one. Inhaling and exhale. Inhale. Inhale, belly rises. Exhale, belly falls. And you just continue in, in with your four counts, in your six counts, out. Just be safe in the knowledge that you know what your body needs, how fast or slowly to send those breaths in and out. And we use this pranayama or breath work here on this beautiful rhythm not too challenging, in for four, out for six. There may be your mind wanders off, which it's designed to do, drawing your awareness back in Come back, find your breath, check back in, four in, and six out. So if you've come in and you're closing in or closing towards your 10th, breath rotation and maybe you've lost count and that's perfectly fine so I invite you to stay here enjoy 
Tenta alongar se vacinar. Alonga. Mindful. Ten count breath. Or if and when you are ready, start to move through fingers, toes, ankles, and wrists. Maybe stretching your body out nice and long. Coming in, bringing your knees in. Maybe opening your eyes if you've had them closed. Finding a gentle way to bring yourself around, maybe through your right side, through into seated and coming up. When you're ready, into a comfortable pose for you. Maybe you want to come up through child's pose. Lengthen through your spine, whether it be facing forward or upright. And then gently find your way back to seated. If you care to stay in Savasana, stay here, enjoy your deep rest. I'd like to thank you for sharing this practice with me. I'm Namaste.